Number seven ministries. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number Seven Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermonette is called Are You Guilty of Loving Jesus Christ? See, the world is guilty of loving a lot of things. But the question is, as a Christian, in your life, are you guilty of loving Jesus? You know, those that are football fans, fanaticals about their team, they will wear t-shirts. In Cleveland, Ohio, they'll wear Browns t-shirts, and they will support the Browns regardless of how many times they lose, regardless of how many times they win, they will unconditionally support the Browns team. You know, and people will talk about them and say bad things about them and say they always lose, they're never going to win a championship. But a true Browns fan is not ashamed of the ridicule. A true Browns fan is not ashamed of the rejection. They will support the team no matter what, even to the extent that they'll be willing to cuss you out or to fight with you if you talk about their team. And I want to know as a Christian, do we have that same position? Do we have that same disposition about our faith? Faith, about our love to Jesus Christ or do we hide are we ashamed of Jesus Christ do we not tell anyone about how great he is and how he saved us how he delivered us how he comforted us in our time of need are we a, a secret agent when it comes to our love for Jesus Christ John 3 16 verse and 17 it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for God did not send the son into the world to judge the world but that the world might be saved through him see the whole essence of Jesus Christ coming into this world was to die for us for the world so that we could be saved it wasn't out of hate it wasn't out of judgment it wasn't out of anger see God never needed to send Jesus Christ into the world if those were the reasons but it was out of pure love for us and so the point being is we don't have to question does God love us you know, he gave his only begotten son. What more does he need to demonstrate his love to you and I? The question is, do you and I, do we love Jesus Christ? That's the question. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, it says, We loved him because he first loved us. You know, when you actually realize how much God loves you and it dawns on you, how much God loves you, it will actually change the way you see your life and it will change the way you see life in general knowing that God initiated the love. Remember, our nature is not, we're not created uh, just to love God. That's not a natural reaction. If that was the case, then everyone would love God. You see, our natural reaction, our natural nature is to love ourself is to be greedy, to be selfish, to seek after pleasure. See, it takes the Holy Spirit to come inside of us to enable us to be able to love. See, we are not love. God is love. And until God, who is love, lives inside of us, we will not be able to love one another and we won't be able to love God. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. And he said unto them, Received ye the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. You know, if you're a Christian, or let me say this, uh, if you're a professing Christian and you claim that you love other people and you claim that you love God, but you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, that is like being in an arranged marriage and saying that you love the person that you were forced to marry. See, we could go through the religious rituals in church and do all the uh, rituals and take communion and baptize and all that stuff, but that alone in itself, without the Holy Spirit, means absolutely nothing. And you can't go through rituals in order to receive the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit has to be sent to you by Jesus Christ and if he doesn't send them to you you're not gonna receive them but when you do receive the Holy Spirit 
when you do receive the Holy Spirit, then you will be able to know that you're able to love other people, and then you will be able to know that you love God. And the, the thing is this, when you have the Holy Spirit, there's no question in your life, do you have the Holy Spirit? It will be so obvious to you that words cannot even describe it. You will see things that you've never seen before. And I don't mean physically in a weird way. I mean spiritually, you'll notice things. The world would call them chance or luck. God calls them confirmation. There are things that we actually see in the spirit realm that confirm to us through other people, through God himself, and through the spirit within us that we do have the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 69 it says, Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a maidservant came unto him, saying, You were also with Jesus of Galilee. Now I know we beat up on Peter on this Bible verse and say that he denied Jesus three times. But check this out. He denied Jesus three times, and even after he denied being with Jesus Christ, the maidservant still did not believe him after he denied him. And my question is to you, is are, are you that close to Jesus Christ that even if you deny him with your words, other people will not even believe you when you tell them that you're not with him? See, when you get that close to Jesus Christ, even if you deny him with your words, there will be evidence in your life. That you're, there, there will be fruits and gifts in the spirit in your life that produce that everyone around you will notice it. And so if it came to a time when I believe that it will, where it's no longer legal to worship Jesus Christ, to be a Christian, and we're going in that direction right now, will there be enough evidence against you that you'll be guilty of loving Jesus Christ? God bless you and have a wonderful day. Number seven ministries, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed.